Today's video is going to continue the discussion on complex numbers. So in the first video of this section, we talked about i, we talked about i squared, we did some, we performed some operations with complex numbers and some with imaginary numbers. Today, we are going to introduce solving and then we're going to talk about something called rationalizing the denominator. So on this first problem that you see, 2i divided by the quantity 3 plus 6i. Okay, so in math, we've decided, just as mathematicians, that i is never allowed to be in the denominator. So that 2i in the numerator is not a problem. The 6i in the denominator is, though. So here's how you're going to approach that. You're going to use something called the conjugate. Okay, so the conjugate of the denominator still has that 3 and that 6i, but you're going to switch the sign of the imaginary part. Now, I'm going to multiply that to the denominator. I don't have the power to just multiply that to the denominator, though. i got to multiply it to the numerator as well, just to maintain the balance. And you're going to see why in a minute. Let's look at that denominator. You can FOIL, you can use the box, either way. So we have 3 and 6i, 3 and negative 6i. So this gives us 9, 18i negative 18i and negative 36i squared. Now, our purpose in multiplying with, by the conjugate was to get rid of the i's. So we notice that these i's cancel each other out, but what about that i squared? Well, from the first video we learned i squared is really negative 1. So really we have 9 minus 36 times negative 1 which is 9 plus 36, which gives us 45. So in that denominator, we have 45. In the numerator, we need to distribute. So we're going to distribute that 2i. So we get 6i minus 12i squared. Now, remember, you're not done. A complex number has i, but a complex number does not have i squared. So as we talked about in the last video, you've got to replace that i squared with negative 1. Okay, so now we have 6i plus 12 all over 45. And then one last step. I gotta figure out is there anything common I can divide out of all my terms. In this case, 6, 12, and 45 are all divisible by 3. So in the numerator I get 2i plus 4. In the denominator I get 15. Remember, i can be in the numerator, not in the denominator. Now, this looks a little funky. This is still a complex number. I could really express this as 2 fifteenths i plus 4 fifteenths. Those are the same. So this is still a complex number. I know that's tricky, so we're going to do another one together. If we look at that second example to the right, we have i in the denominator. So again, i in the numerator is not a problem. i in the denominator is. So what you're going to do is you're still going to have those two terms, but you're going to switch the sign of the imaginary part. So again, that's called the conjugate. Whatever the imaginary part is, switch the sign. Again, has to be done to the numerator as well. So over to the side, I'm going to handle the denominator first. So I have 3 plus 5i, 3 minus 5i. Again, some of you like to FOIL or do the arcs, that's fine. I just prefer the box. So we get 9, 15i, negative 15i, and negative 25i squared. If we do this right, the i's should cancel. So we get 9 minus 25, but replace i squared with negative 1. So this becomes 9 plus 25, which is 34. So 34 is what happens to our denominator, or what our denominator becomes. Numerator, we're going to distribute. So we get negative 6i plus 10i squared. So negative 2 and negative 5 is a positive 10. If we replace that i squared with negative 1, we get 10 times negative 1, which will give us negative 10 over 34. Again, we're not finished. See if you can divide out anything. I can divide everything by a 2. 
I get negative 3i minus 5 over 17. Again, you can express this answer more like a complex number. It can also be expressed as negative 3 over 17i minus 5 over 17. Those are the same. So that's the idea of rationalizing the denominator. I can't be in the denominator, but it can be in the numerator. Okay, so let's move on now and talk about solving. Okay, so quick review. What does it mean to find the zeros of a quadratic equation? Find the zeros means to find x when y equals zero. So find all the x values for where y equals zero. So if we look at that example number one, it's already set equal to zero for us. We have a few different options if we remember. First thing we talked about at the very beginning of the chapter is we factored. Then we did the square root method. We also looked at completing the square. So looking at example number one, we have an x squared but no x. So we're going to do the square root method. We got to get that x squared alone. So subtract 256. Then we're going to divide by 4. We get negative 64. Now that the x squared is alone, I'm ready to take the square root. Here's where things are a little bit different. I still get my x, and I get my plus or minus. But what about that negative 64? Well, the square root of 64 is 8. Because it's a negative, we get 8i. So that's our answer. So it's not a whole lot different. You're still going to either factor or do the quadratic formula or complete the square, but you're going to get imaginary answers this time. Again, we should get two of them because of that x squared. So like in example two, we're going to get two solutions. Maybe real, maybe imaginary. Okay, so we're going to start this one the same way. Get the x squared alone. Now we're ready to take a square root. So we're going to get x equals plus or minus 2i. 2i. Now, I don't know if you remember from the earlier video, we looked at a graph like this. This was in the video before this. And we said we're looking for where the graph crosses the x-axis where y is 0, but it doesn't happen. This is one of those cases where you're going to get two imaginary solutions. So there are two solutions, they're just imaginary. Like in examples 1 and 2, if you were to graph those parabolas, they won't, wouldn't cross the x-axis. y would never be 0 for a real value of x. So just, That's just to let you know what this is going to look like if you were to look at a graph. Okay, let's flip the page. Here's your example for you to try. So you're going to solve using the square root method like we've been doing. Get x squared alone and make sure that you have two solutions, two answers. When you come to class, I'll be making sure that you have this problem done. If you have any questions, please write them down or send me an email. Good luck.